What's going on guys? It's Omni York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over my cavalry commander guide for free to play players in Rise of Kingdoms. I got a lot of really great feedback from my infantry commander guide for free to play players so i figured it was you know only reasonable to bring you guys the same type of guide but for cavalry um this is something that you guys also asked for so i'm really happy to be making this video for you guys um i did a little bit of researching earlier today just to figure out what i wanted to talk about specifically in this video and one thing that i actually didn't talk about in my infantry guide is which civilization is best for infantry now uh, you know in that video what's interesting with infantry is there's only one civilization that specifically boosts infantry units which is rome so it I, it's okay that i kind of skipped it in that video um but cavalry is different right there are actually three civilizations that buff cavalry units um there are also three civilizations that have their special unit be a cavalry type of unit um and those three civilizations are germany with the teutonic knight we also have spain with the conquistador and we also have arabia with the bear with me the mamluk i'm not sure if i pronounced that right um but arabia gets five percent attack germany also gets five percent attack and spain gets five percent defense if you compare these three special units um what you're gonna find is that the conquistador actually has the highest attack um and germany and arabia fall somewhere in the middle of trading off defense and health and things like that one thing to know is that you shouldn't necessarily pick your civilization specifically for the special unit or for the buff for that unit um if you are late game city hall 25 then yeah maybe it's time to look into a civilization change to really 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 focus on one unit type um but what i would recommend instead and i mentioned this in my beginner's guide video to rise of kingdoms is when you first start the game pick a civilization that will give you the most useful buffs to you and it actually turns out for me that i actually prefer spain um for that reason um not only do they buff your cavalry and give you the unit that has the highest cavalry attack um but you also gain 10 percent more experience and you have your resource production boosted by 20 percent now all three of these buffs are useful pretty much no matter what point in the game you're at um and that's why i really really enjoy the spain civilization i think this is a really great choice for um, people who are specializing in cavalry or who are just starting out the game and they want to pick a civilization that gives you some pretty good buffs across the board um, again you could also choose germany or arabia if you are focusing on cavalry personally for me um, I prefer Spain one of the reasons that Spain is also incredible is because it comes with Pelagius now that's gonna kind of transition us perfectly into what commanders do you have available to you as a free-to-play player who's focusing on um, cavalry and one thing that I like about free to play for cavalry and the reason that I actually think cavalry units are the best units to focus on as a free to play player is because there are more epic commanders that focus on cavalry than there are epic commanders who focus solely on infantry or archery. So for example, infantry has two epic commanders that focus on just infantry. There are two com epic commanders that focus on just uh, archers. And there are three epic commanders that focus on just cavalry so for that reason you actually have um, more options as a cavalry player um, if you're focusing on calves you have more commander um, uh, variation that you can kind of pick from depending on the scenario the first one I want to talk about is Pelagius and just a little bit of a spoiler he is my favorite epic commander focused on cavalry again as you can see here he does have the cavalry skill tree um, i'm sorry uh, cavalry talent tree as well as the skill talent tree which is super super useful he's also a garrison commander and you could use him as that but i prefer to build him for an open field battler um and so let's talk a little bit about what pelagius does that makes me like him so much his primary skill charge um, actually deals a direct damage factor of 300 on one turn then another 300 the turn after that and then another 300 on the following turn so a total of 900 damage to a single target which is cool and then after the uh, um the rage or after the active skill goes off your rage is restored by 100 which is cool um what this gives you is a little bit of a rage engine so that means the more that your active skill goes off 
the sooner it is until your next active skill goes off and so that's really really useful and you can kind of use that in conjunction with the skill talent tree his next uh skill actually just increases attack and defense by 15 percent each which is awesome um if you compare that to somebody like um by bars for example he increases cavalry attack by 20 percent which is a little bit higher but it's a total buff of 20 percent to cavalry whereas if you look at plagius you have 15 attack 15 defense that's a total buff of 30 percent to cavalry so while he doesn't buff attack as much he buffs cavalry overall uh, by 10 percent more which i think personally is just better um third skill is focused on garrison and watchtower and the fourth skill actually gives you a 10 percent chance to heal by a healing factor of 450 but for two seconds so it's actually a healing factor of about 900 which is really 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 good when this does go off now what's interesting about pelagius is that he is a little bit um a little bit bulky for a uh commander in the in the focusing on cavalry units right because cavalry again they're they're mainly focusing on dealing damage as sort of a glass cannon and i used this phrase um when i did my Cao Cao video um you guys can check that out if you have Cao Cao. he's certainly a good option for cavalry commanders but he you know again he's not really going to be that accessible to free-to-play players so what i like to do with with pelagius is focus on the skill talent tree to get this first skill to pop off as much as possible right um and the reason for that is because this uh skill tree not only increases the active skill damage of your primary commander but also your secondary commander um and it also gives you rejuvenate here which will give you even more rage when a skill is used and remember um his active skill also gives you rage you also have burning blood which gives you more rage you also have feral nature which gives you a 10 percent chance to get even more rage and then you have a ton of different uh, talents in here that boost your skill damage such as latent power what I also did was um, build all the way up all four of these talents in the um, cavalry tree. And then you have a couple of different options. I would personally recommend getting Undying Fury no matter what, because you get even more rage. And again, that's what we want with Pelagius. We want his active skill to go off as much as possible because it is dealing a significant amount, amount of skill damage to that single target. And it's also granting rage every time it goes off. And so Pelagius actually generates a lot of rage. And the more rage you can generate, um, the more your skills are going to go off. And the more they go off, the more you get rage from something like Rejuvenate which again you're going to be pumping out way more um skill attacks with pelagius than pretty much any other um uh, cavalry commander because of his primary skill giving you a 100 rage restoration when it goes off so super cool uh, little fun fact about pelagius is that he does pump out um active skill damage uh, quite frequently compared to his other epic counterparts such as bybars and belisarius now from there once you get these four again full skill tree including uh latent power when you build up here build out these four then i would always grab undying fury and then you have a choice right what i did here was i put three points into defense for calves two points into march speed and um two points in two, i'm sorry one point into emblazoned shield and then one point into cavalry march speed what you could do instead um, is actually instead of spending uh, six points here you could put three points here you could put uh, two points here and one point here and then also leave this point as well for the march speed right i like march speed for cavalry because they are the fastest troop type and so you want to play to that strength um, and kind of keep them moving around the battlefield really really fast cavalry are weak to infantry so keep that in mind um but the benefit that cavalry has over infantry is that they're faster right so if you can run away um from a infantry army then that's really really great and that's a skill that um that that cavalry has right at their disposal which is really cool so again this is how i have my pelagius built but if again if you want to take these six points again leaving this one take these six points and swap them for six points here um what that's going to do is actually change this three percent defense into three percent attack um you're gonna this um march speed actually is traded off for this march speed so that changes nothing at all but you'll lose the one you'll lose the three percent skill damage reduction in favor of the um 10 chance to reduce their attack by five percent for two seconds i prefer the consistent three percent reduction in skill damage taken that's just me um 
that's just kind of how I prefer it. But if you do, if you would rather have the 3% attack more than 3% defense, you could build it this way if you wanted to. Um, again, that is really up to you, or you could kind of uh, take these three points here and put them all in here to have both attack and defense, but you do lose that 6% um, March speed, which again, I think is really, really useful. I really do recommend that. So this is my build here that I use for Pelagius. And the secondary that I would recommend that you pair him with um, is Bybars, right? And Bybars is another cavalry commander in the epic tier. And what he actually does is his primary skill also does a really, really large amount of skill damage, but it is in a, in a forward facing fan shaped area. And this is an AOE attack. So not only is he dealing a 1000 damage factor at expertise which if you remember pelagius's primary skill does over the course of three three seconds um it does 900 damage to a single target and then restores 100 rage this actually deals a thousand damage to up to five targets and reduces their march speed by 50 percent for two seconds so this is um in in many ways an even more powerful skill damage right and what what's cool about that is one if you're fighting in the open fields and there's a ton of enemies uh, around you this aoe is going to deal a ton of damage across the board and also by focusing on the skill tree with pelagius as primary it's really going to buff the skill damage of this really powerful active skill uh, as well um and so the other cool thing is that he boosts the attack of 20 percent, right so that just adds 20 percent attack to your um pelagius which is nice this is for attacking cities which i wouldn't recommend doing with epic commanders and then this fourth one actually um heals your troops for a healing factor of 200 which isn't that much um but it is nice right it is a nice little bonus and it also increases your march speed by 50 percent for 10 seconds so this is great for getting away from enemies especially because you have the slow effect from by bars primary skill now again the reason that I'm, I'm pairing by bars with pelagius uh, and making by bar secondary is because you really want to take advantage of the skill damage and cavalry attack buff that by bars brings along for pelagius now if you notice by bars also has the cavalry and skill tree right and so you might say well why would you put pelagius primary with the full skill tree and and, and by bar secondary rather than the other way around and you could technically do that right you could technically do by bars full skill tree with pelagius secondary and you would essentially have a very similar if not exactly the same um build the reason that i would rather build pelagius primary as a skill commander is for a build that we're going to talk about later so that's my first recommendation pelagius primary by bar secondary focus on the skill tree right that's what that's what i would recommend first the second option is if you want to use by bars as your primary you do have a couple of different options now since talents only matter for the primary commander and since you already built pelagius as a skill damage commander right focusing on the skill talent tree there's really not that big of a, of a point in building by bars also as skill, right? Because if you want a full cavalry army with a full skill tree, then you can just use your Pelagius, right? Um, so what I would recommend is actually building by bars with the full cavalry tree, um, and putting the rest of the points in the skill tree. Now my by bars is not full, uh, level 60, but I want to show you what that looks like, um, by showing you Pelagius. And again, Pelagius, uh, also has the same, these two same trees. So this is how I would build my by bars, right? What we did here was we went all the way to the top, um, got all five points, maxed out the cavalry tree. We even put the optional point in here for the 1% health. We still picked up Undying Fury. We avoided uh, Equestrian Excellence because it's only a 10% chance for March Speed. I don't really care about that. We still made our way over to Rejuvenate for the Rage Engine, and then we put the remaining nine points into the optional Latent Power, three in Tactical Mastery, and three in Heraldic Shield. Um, this this build is because you get rejuvenate it's very similar to the build that we had for pelagius the difference is that this build um it's better for shorter fights because you do have the rally and cry here which increases all damage by 15 percent for the first 10 seconds um after that it falls off right so this this build is actually better for um kind of going in and just really slamming a single target so for example if you have three armies out on the field and you swarm a single target that target is going to die really quickly and this build is going to be uh, dealing more damage for that for the time that you're fighting than maybe the other um skill builds here the other cool thing is that 
this build is a little bit better at getting swarmed because um you do have a 10 percent chance to reduce enemy attack by 20 percent and this um this is essentially a 10 percent chance for everyone attacking you so if you're getting attacked by multiple armies this has a higher percent chance of going off um but if you're a free-to-play player getting swarmed is always a terrible idea so you know again this the, the reason that this is my second um second choice is because i do prefer this build um but this one does have its uh its specific uses and again there's no point in building two cavalry commanders with the exact same build right because talents only matter if they're the primary commander so you might as well have one commander of each just to give you that option if you want to in the future right and so i would focus on pelagius with this one but later down the line when your pelagius is maxed you can focus on by bars and go this route if you want to um that's so if you build um by bars in that way uh, a great secondary for that build would be Pelagius, right? You just kind of switch the roles, and then instead of having a skill, talent, uh, focused, um, skill damage pairing, you have a pair that focuses on the cavalry tree. And again, it's uh, it's a little bit better at getting swarmed, and it's also better for shorter fights where you clearly have the advantage, and you're really just going to deal a ton of damage in those 10 seconds, and hopefully the battle is over by that point. Um, so you sustain less damage as a result, right? You want battles to end as quickly as possible. The other thing that you could do is do by bars primary with the with the complete cavalry tree that we just showed, um, and you could also have have Belisarius secondary which is the third Man, epic Lari. commander that's Defend focused on Lari. the cavalry troop type and what this is going to do is actually create a a army that can sustain more damage than Pelagius but will deal less damage in return and the reason for that is because of Belisarius's uh skills that he offers so his primary skill is a two second debuff and then a little bit of skill damage which is nice right um he also has a defense buff of 30 percent right again Pelagius only has a 15 percent uh, defense buff which is you know this is double that in exchange for the attack buff so that's one thing to notice you also get a 50 percent increase in march speed for 10 seconds after leaving battle which makes him even faster at running away than pelagius uh and then you also get um an increase in damage if the enemy army is below 50 percent you get a 25 percent increase to damage which is pretty significant um so this makes belisarius another option um, another secondary option to buy bars again if you're going to do a buy bars belisarius um, combo with buy bars being primary you do want the cavalry talent tree to be maxed out like i showed you before with my pelagius um and again the reason for that is because there's no point in really having skill damage for belisarius because his skill damage is so little you're not really going to see the effects of that so that's another option that you could do right so let's recap really quick before we move on we talked about Plug is primary, buy bar secondary with the full skill talent tree and extra points going into cavalry. We then talked about <clears throat> buy bars primary, Plug is secondary with the full cavalry tree. And the reason for that build is because it adds a little bit more versatility to your options. And then the third build we talked about was buy bars primary, still full cavalry tree with the rest of the points going into skill with Belisaria secondary and that's uh, a, a unit um, an army that can take a little bit more damage and may have a better chance at fleeing from an enemy that you're losing from now the fourth pair that I want to talk about is actually a Belisarius no, primary no, 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 with a by bars <laughs> secondary and this troop uh, this army is actually really interesting because if you remember correctly the previous two commanders we talked about Pelagius and by bars both have the cavalry and skill talent trees Belisarius has the unique mobility tree and so we built one of each of the other trees right and if we want to use Belisarius for PvP then we're not going to be using the peacekeeping tree and if we want a full cavalry uh army that focuses on the cavalry talent tree well then we can just use by bars as our primary so really there's no reason not to build belisarius as a full mobility tree um if what you're doing is using him for pvp 
now what's interesting about the mobility tree and i covered this in my Cao Cao video is that it makes belisarius one of the fastest troops on the field right he's one of the fastest commanders in the open field because of this mobility tree and if you're going to use belisarius as your primary i would recommend fully building out that mobility tree and what that looks like and i'm going to use my Cao Cao as an example because he is level 60 but they do both have the same talent trees here um and so this is how i would recommend building your belisarius if it's going to be your primary full talent tree for mobility here except for swiftness i don't really like that um, but we do go here and grab hasty departure we do make our way up the center here to grab that six percent march speed for cavalry it also gives uh, a little bit of march speed for when you're reduced to less than 50 percent which is super cool you also can make your way over here to thoroughbreds which gives you another nine percent march speed so this is uh, to my knowledge the fastest talent build in the game right and you can do this with belisarius because he has the same three talent trees as south the fact that south is a legendary doesn't change up these talents they're exactly the same for belisarius there's no downside right so this is how i would build my belisarius and again the reason for that is because um he is unique from Bybars and Pelagius in that he has that mobility tree so it gives you more flexibility and what you can do with a belisarius primary fully built mobility is pair him with a um uh, with a by bars secondary right belisarius primary full mobility tree by bars secondary uh and what that's gonna do is it aids your speed on the battlefield right so again with belisarius what you're doing is building a super fast army and what this is good for is running away from enemies in situations where you are outnumbered um it's really great for killing enemy farmers and I, again i talked about this in my south side video so i don't want to um rehash too much of that information again here if you want i do recommend checking that out even if you're not going to use south Zou, a lot of my tips there will apply to belisarius um but what you're doing is essentially creating a troop uh, an army that is really good at running around the open field killing enemy uh, farmers and you know reinforcing rallies very quickly and things like that um really great with belisarius but the reason that you pair by secondary as opposed to pelagius is because by also has his primary <laughs> skill that slows the target um and also he increases your march speed when leaving battle and those two things are really really uh, they, they, they have really great synergy with belisarius uh with belisarius's um uh specialty which is getting away from enemies and you know being really quick on the battlefield so that is the fourth build that i would recommend belisarius full mobility tree the rest kind of spread out to get the most um, march speed and then pairing by bars with the secondary and finally the last thing that i want to recommend and this is technically not a free-to-play build right technically not um but this i think it's important to know because a lot of people watching this if you've invested a little bit of money into rise of kingdoms you may have this option available to you and again it's only a little bit of money less than 50 bucks less than i think less than 40 bucks even um and you can have this build for yourself and that is a pelagius primary with the exact same talent build that i talked about before your secondary being minamoto at five five one one that would be an excellent commander pairing for you because of a couple of things one minamoto's skill damage is insane right he is insane i don't even have him expertise and it's still really really good especially compared to by bars and belisarius which are your other options and he also increases your march speed by 10 percent and increases your um attack bonus by 20 percent which is awesome and then finally if you have one point in warlord you have a 10 percent chance to increase uh the damage that your enemy takes by 10 percent for three seconds so that's just a little added bonus if that does pop off you they're taking 10 percent more damage which is really really cool i really love this pairing and again this isn't technically free to play um but i think pelagius is just the perfect epic commander for minamoto because again they they both love skill damage right minamoto is such a powerful uh, single target skill damage commander 
uh, and again, so is Pelagius, right? Um, so I think these two pair super, super well together. And I think, you know, again, it's technically not free to play, but you can get Minamoto to 5511 for like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, and so it's not unreasonable to assume that some of you may watching this video while you're not free to play, you are close to it. And I think this is a really great option, right? And if you do go this route, um, where you have Pl uh, Pelagius primary, Minamoto secondary, you can then have a second full cavalry army, either led by um, Bybars for damage or Belisarius for speed, right? And that really helps you out as a as a cavalry um, as a cavalry player having two full uh, armies of just cavalry with um, four commanders that all focus on cavalry is a really unique position to be in. And that's not something that you can say for infantry or for archers. And that's why I think that, um, that it's really, really a great to be a cavalry player, um, cavalry fleet of play player, as opposed to infantry and archery. Now, again, the reason that I have initially said that it's better to build Pelagius skill talent tree rather than by bars skill talent tree is because of the, of those of you who do have Minamoto, um, it's just well, better to have Pelagius as your primary well, than it is to have Bybars as your primary for Minamoto because, again, the well, the cool thing about Pelagius is that he like does have that built-in rage restoration, and the more rage that you generate, the more Minamoto is going to pop off that active skill, which does insane single target damage, and that's just a better option than Bybars AoE because, again, even though by bars does has have the skill tree he doesn't have the rage regeneration that pelagius does um and so for that reason i think pelagius is definitely a better option for minamoto than by bars and so for those of you that do have this option it's better to do pelagius full skill tree a belisarius full mobility tree and that leaves you with by bars who you might as well build full cavalry just so that way you have the versatility of all three options at your disposal given the context and specific situation that you may find yourself in now i know some of you guys are going to say what about Cao Cao, right what if you have a 5111 Cao Cao? um he is a really great commander his first skill is the best that he has um but it i was really struggling to figure find a build that i think Cao Cao would be better in than by bars right and again because you want this active skill to go off as much as possible you would want to have a pelagius primary Cao Cao secondary with that full skill tree um but the 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 problem is that is a 5111 Cao Cao better than a fully maxed out by bars in that secondary slot and i'm not sure if it is right and and i would love for you guys to comment down below and tell me if you know the answer um because Cao Cao will do more single target skill damage to um to a, a to a target than by bars because the active skill damage is just higher right and it also reduces the enemy's attack by 40 percent which is really really good um, and it reduces their march speed, which is cool. It's an added bonus, but you only get an extra an extra 10% attack and 3% march speed with him at 5111. Um, you do have the chance of um, restoring some rage, which is nice. You would get a healing factor of 500 and 50 rage regeneration, which will make his would make skills go off even more often with Pelagius, which is really great. Um, but again, you're only getting 10% attack bonus, whereas with um with by bars you're getting a 20 percent attack bonus um and it's just it's hard for me to really say which is better um i would need to do some testing it it, it may be the case that it, it's out so that's five one 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 would be better in, in the secondary slot than by bars but i can't say that for sure i can't say confidently so i'm not even gonna um really take a stance but it would they would go well together again Pelagius primary, Cao Cao secondary would really take advantage of Cao Cao's um, single target nuking damage, as well as the chance of healing and re restoring rage at the 550 level. Um, that is really great for Pelagius as well. But again, I'm not really sure if it's statistically better than by bars in any given situation. I'm just not sure. Um, it may be, but again, I don't know. And with that being said, guys, I'm pretty sure I covered everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. We talked about civilizations and special, special unit types. Then we talked about all of the epic commanders and talent builds that I would recommend for them if you're a free-to-play player. 
in rise of kingdoms now with that being said guys i would love for you guys to comment down below telling me any questions that you have about cavalry commanders and talent builds and things like that um, i would also love feedback if you guys have any suggestions or variants on my builds and things like that i would love to hear them um, I, I had people tell me some of their builds from my infantry um, video and i'm i'm learning as you guys are giving me information as well which i absolutely love if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really does help my channel out a ton subscribe if you're new around here and click that bell to receive notifications the next time that i upload more rise of kingdoms guides and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace